While COVID has impacted consumption in most of the sectors, there are some who have actually benefited in this crisis. Pharma and agrochemicals have really weathered the COVID storm because of their properties of being essential services. In fact, there are many industries that benefit due to their dependence on these sectors and one of them is amines. Well, it is the magic solvent used to manufacture a variety of products. It's in the tablet that you're consuming, the paints on your walls, color on your clothes. While amines are of various types, aliphatic amines see high amount of consumption. So let's quickly take a look at all the sectors it is being used in. The biggest consumer is the pharma sector, contributing 51% of the industry revenues, followed by paints and oil and gas. And amines are made using crude derivatives, like methanol, which is imported from Iran. We all know how crude prices have declined and accordingly, methanol prices are also at an all-time low levels of $150 to $160 per tonne. But you all must be wondering, why are we talking about it now? Well, this is because increase in pharma and agrochemical consumption means increase in amines consumption. The market here is small. Globally, the size of amines industry is $4.1 billion, which is just 0.1% of the total global chemical industry. Global producers are Eastman Chemical Companies and BASF. The size of the Indian amines market is slightly over 1200 crore rupees, and there are just three players, RCF, Alkyl Amines, and Balaji Amines. It is a hazardous material and difficult to transport, and hence the industry is oligopolistic with two to three producers catering to majority of the demand. Alphatic amines are of two kinds, methyl amines and ethyl amines, and each of them has three variations, mono, di, and tri, and further solvents can be derived from these. India has a capacity of 84,000 tons of methyl amines and 36,000 tons for ethyl amines, with biology amines being leader in methyl and alkyl amines being the leader in ethyl amine segment. While biology amines and alkyl amines get all their revenues from amines, RCF has just 2% contribution to its overall revenues. Let's talk about what trends and opportunities we are seeing in amines right now. Well, there is an increase in demand for amines domestically due to increased consumption in agrochemicals and pharma segments. Yes, the remaining sectors are seeing some decline due to lockdown and logistical constraints, but increased demand in pharma and agrochemicals is a positive trend for the industry. Let me list few examples which are seeing high attraction here. DMF. This amine is used in every drug that you and I consume. There was a 30% increase in DMF prices due to higher consumption to around 75 to 80 rupees per kg. However, 67% of the total requirement is important due to cheaper imports priced at 63 rupees per kg from China and Saudi Arabia. And hence, there is an opportunity of import substitution. DMAC, the another amine used in pharma and API sector, this sector is buzzing right now. This has seen a 20% increase in consumption. However, there is still high dependence on imports for amines. China is the largest consumer and producer of amines, accounting for 60% of global production. Additionally, important to note that India is self-sufficient in methyl amines as there are zero imports and also the pricing is cheapest in the world. However, for ethyl amines, there are still large quantities imported by the country and there is an opportunity for import substitution here. Companies are planning on setting up more capacities in ethyl amines, so the twin benefits of lower raw material prices and higher output prices, this is something that can be helpful in achieving Atmanirbharta.